Hey guys, how's it going? It's Taro here. Hope you guys are doing well. You can also call me Fadaus. It's my Muslim name. And uh, I would like to wish all my dear brothers and sisters in Islam Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. So today why I'm sharing this video is because I've seen a lot of Muslims who have just newly embraced the religion, shared their stories online, and I was really inspired to share my story as well. And I hope that through my sharing, many reverts or converts out there will also share their story. I hope that for those who are also looking at the religion through my stories will also come see the beauty of Islam. So how I came to embrace Islam? I was baptized when I was a little boy. My parents brought me to church and I've been going to church till I was 20 years old. At that point in time, yeah, I felt that that was the path until I went to Australia and I started studying about philosophy and uh, I started to question a lot of things about life, the meaning of life, why we're here. It basically got me to look deeper into myself and to understand why did I choose to follow Christianity at that point of time? Um, why did I choose to um, believe in a God even? And uh, I thought to myself that maybe this is all, uh, you know, uh, a creation of man that we came up with this idea of needing a supreme being to define things in life to help us get some sense of security. And I didn't believe in God. I decided to live life based on my terms and I live my life to the fullest. I just believe in a simple philosophy that as long as I'm kind to others and I'm happy, and they're happy, you know, I will then just attract positivity in my life and I can live a happier, fulfilling life. Of course, you know, that did not turn out how I wanted it to be. Um, so, you know, I was having a lot of fun in Australia and um, until one day um, I got a call from my parents saying that my grandma passed away and that got me thinking, what if, if there's really a God? Because as much as I wanted to, bring positivity into the world and also to be happy there are some things in life that you can't control and that got me thinking who is who is in control of death and I realized that no matter how much I want to control my destiny in life there's always something that I can't control and death is one of those things and I was really sad because my grandma was really special to me and I was like thinking you know why did God take her away from me? Why wasn't I given a chance to say goodbye? I was all the way in Australia and I had to fly all the way back for the funeral. So that got me thinking, you know, that there has to be some, someone more powerful than death. And that is where I started to think there's a God. Uh, I didn't want a religion to tell me at that time who God was. I thought that all religions are just human constructs, like people created religions to feel that they need some form of moral code or security in life. But then, the incident with my grandmother got me thinking that there is God and I became agnostic. Fast forward to the time after I graduated, I came back to Singapore and I was working as much as I didn't have a religion. Money was like a religion for me. I was chasing money, trying to earn every penny and somehow God brought this lady into my life and she she shared with me a bit about Islam and how beautiful the religion is and I should give it a chance to find out more. She is quite an attractive girl so I, I wanted to get to know her better and uh, so I thought okay why not you know just give it a shot and learn more about the religion and maybe I can get her to see from my point of view how the religion is flawed. That was how arrogant I was. So I went to, I went to um, Darul Akam, which is the Muslims Converts Center in Singapore, and I was given a basic introduction to Islam. And uh, during that time, the girl that I was uh, dating, she basically told me to write down any questions that I have and to ask the teacher at the end of the class all my questions and he would be the best person to advise me. So I wrote it down, I gave it a shot. Um, at that time, the teacher was Ustad Saiful Rahman. He was very logical, he was rational. He gave me really logical reasons. I was expecting something else. I was expecting something like just believe. Close your eyes and believe and have faith, something like that. But it wasn't like that. 
it really made sense to me. But I didn't want to immediately embrace Islam. There's a lot of changes that I had to make, like lifestyle. I had to fast during the month of Ramadan. I have to only eat food that is halal. And uh, I asked myself, I should just do more of my research and find out more. So I went for more classes and asked more questions. Before I began my journey to discover more about Islam, I told this girl that I was dating that if this does not turn out well, I hope we still can be friends. But I will let you know as soon as possible. I don't want to keep you waiting for me. And I hope that, you know, you'll understand if I don't think the religion suits me. So she said, yeah, she totally understands. Uh, but she said I should give my 100% to go find out more about the religion, to ask all my questions, to come with a humble heart, and to truly want to find out about the meaning of life, truth. And I think, yeah, you know, that is what I've been searching for my whole life. I wanted to know what is the meaning of life, um, why we're here, the purpose and everything. So, so then the month of Ramadan came, it's the fasting month for the Muslims. And I thought, okay, you know, since if I ever want to know this lifestyle is going to suit me, I should really give fasting a shot. Maybe if I give up halfway, and then that's it, you know, I won't waste time and I can just tell her we should go our own way, but we can be friends. So I tried to fast, and surprisingly, I did. The whole 30 days of fasting. And uh, somewhere nearing the end of Ramadan, I had a dream. This is really actually the turning point. I dreamt that I was walking towards someone who seated in the middle of the living room along a hallway. I have to walk I was walking towards him and he was sitting there patiently smiling. He had this radiant light. I could tell that you know he's just a person and a kind soul. And he was just smiling at me directly and he said Brother, when are you going to be part of the family? And I woke up. Ah, uh, initially I thought, you know, this been studying too much about the religion, you know, I might be getting my head too far in that uh, it's probably acting out in my dreams. But on the same day I had a friend call me out for dinner. His name is Ibrahim. And that's when I had dinner with him and he said, Hey, I heard that you've, you've been going to that Muslim convert center, studying about the religion and understanding about Islam. So when are you planning to be a Muslim, brother? So I thought this must be a coincidence, you know. Just when I had a dream and my friend asked me out for dinner and he asked me the same question, I was still quite stubborn thinking that this is just pure coincidence and I went on to with my daily life but the same dream happened again and this time I remember the exact day and time. It was a Saturday morning around 9.30. I had the same dream and I woke up. I woke up and I said to myself, no, this can't be happening again, you know, it must be something or someone is telling me something and uh, I decided at that point of time to test God. I said a prayer before I started to ask for for directions in life, you know. So I said, I sat down, I just closed my eyes, I put my hands together like this and said, Dear God, I know you exist and you're the most powerful and you can make anything possible because I truly and fully believe in your supremacy and power. You can most certainly show me the way in life and the truth. And I seek your infinite wisdom and power to show me the way. Please, with all my heart, I sincerely seek, I seek your help in this. Please, let me know if, you know, is Islam truly the religion for me? Or should I just go back to being who I was? I said I'm going to test you, unfortunately. I'm going to take a Bible and a Quran and put it beside me. I'm going to randomly flip those pages three times. And the first thing that I see, it has to be crystal clear a message for me, saying to me, this is the truth. This is the way. This is who you should follow. It has to be that simple. 
So I'm going to start with the Bible because that's where I started. You know, I was baptized. So I'm going to start with the Bible. So I picked up the Bible and I randomly just flipped the page. It wasn't the first page. It was somewhere in between. And it just did not tell me a very clear picture. I had to decipher and to read everything in between and come to a conclusion and all. I said, okay, you know, this is not what I want. I want something clear, like this is it, you know. So I closed the book and I randomly flip the next page, like somewhere in between a few more pages down. It's totally random. And again, I did not see an answer. So I did three times, three times and I wasn't given an answer. I put the book aside and you know what? It's time to give the Quran a chance to tell me. Next thing I did was I randomly closed my eyes and opened the book. And the first thing, the first thing I saw was this verse from Surah Al-Hajj, verse 54. <laughs> So basically it says, and so those who were given knowledge may know that it is the truth from your Lord and therefore believe in it and their hearts humbly submit to it. And indeed is Allah, the God of those who have believed to a straight path. I thought maybe it's just still a coincidence, you know, I was kind of like in a state of denial. And uh, so I closed the book and I randomly opened up another page of the book and it's totally from another chapter altogether. My eyes set on the next verse and it's Surah, which is chapter 41 and verse 53. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم سنريهم ما ياتنا في الآفاك وفي أنفسهم حتى we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that it is the truth. But is it not sufficient concerning your Lord? that he is over all things a witness. Just paraphrasing what he's saying is like, have I not shown you the signs in the world? Do you still want to question who is your Lord? It was like the second verse was responding to the first one. It's almost like he was speaking directly to me. Like God was speaking directly to me. So I felt a shiver down my spine and I was a bit of, I was kind of afraid and at the same time amazed, you know, from that test and I I was then quickly apologized and said I was sorry I was I'm sorry for testing you Lord but could you please forgive me and accept me as one of your believers you know it was like a tremendous feeling of a wave of tears that is like that came straight from inside your heart suddenly all that God is down and I felt his presence was just there and it was there all along and so I I said you know I can't deny now that I've been shown the truth I have to I have I have to take a step forward you know so I I called Daru Akam and said how how do I become a Muslim please um, tell me and he said um, oh you have to first register an interest to take the Shahada and then there's a date planned for you 
and there will be an official uh, person to do the registration and it was a month later and it was 2nd of November 2014 so that was the day that I took my Shahada and it was amazing the feeling was really amazing it was like all the burden in my heart was suddenly gone there's complete fulfillment and suddenly there's an overwhelming feeling and sense of peace and I just feel that uh, I finally found the truth I decided to give my girlfriend the good news that I have decided and so um, she she cried she said you know how many nights I've been praying for you to be you know shown the way to see that Islam is the most beautiful religion and he answered my prayers that's what she said so I felt like this was someone I cannot let go this is this is definitely the goal that was meant for me that God had probably put her in my path to show me the way back home and it was truly amazing yeah, I think we've come to the end of the sharing. I hope you enjoyed my story. Be sure to catch more videos. I'll share with you more about how I learned more about the Quran and more about Islam. I hope that my sharing brought you some hope and feeling of peace. And to all my dear Muslim brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Jazakallahu khairan. And um, to everyone out there, peace be with you. And I hope you have a beautiful, um, wonderful day ahead. Thank you so much for tuning in and uh, be sure to subscribe if you like more of my sharing. Take care. Bye.